Hey guys, Double Wide Six, and today I have this Gravely Zero Turn ZT1540, and the problem with it is one of the rear axles or transaxles is not working, and the, the axle's real loose. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to have to do, but uh, we're going to go through and try and repair this transaxle. Here's the axle, you can see it's loose in there, almost pulling right out, looks like it, it popped off the gear, I wouldn't be surprised if there's just a snap ring that's loose. So there's a few half inch bolts. Okay guys, I got it up on the bench, and here's the issue, if you couldn't see, this uh, axle shaft is moving. Now, there should be a gear on here, it runs right here, and there's usually a snap ring, and my guess is that's all that's wrong with this, and if that's the case, I'm really lucky, because uh, this, this part's about, I don't know, the dealer told me it was 800, I could probably get it for about 650 though. So. Why I have you guys here, we'll strip it down and we'll see what's going on. This transmission, I think it's an EZ21 or 2200. It's a tough torque. No, hydro gear. It's a hydro gear. So at this point, all we have here is uh, a little bit of silicone. There's oil in here, so I'm going to pull the trap on this cable and try and drop this through if I can. Turn this up this way. Seems pretty solid. Just looking for a spot to put a screwdriver in. There's one here.
So we're going to kind of tilt this guy up and see if uh, we can't see what the issue is. So at this point, we'll pull this apart. We have a shim washer here and a shim washer here. Well, there we go. We have a broken axle. Completely broken through there. Now, I wonder what's... There's just a little burr on that end that's actually holding that. So I've set it on the floor to prevent any contamination. So I got all these parts out. So I have the hub in here, I loosen the nut, and there's a spline there, I just want to try and hammer down on this and see if it moves. So I'm going to try and add a little heat to it and see if that'll help.
Sometimes you just need the right tool for the job. That's it. Able to get that hub loose. The uh, fit was actually tapered and splined, and it was just really tight. So this is all in good shape. Now this shaft's three quarter inch, and it was broken right here. Uh, Hydro gear is a problem with these things breaking so I know they have an upgrade kit to one inch so that's probably what I will do this one there's a snap ring and a spline this one will come out because it was it, it moves in here already and it was submerged in oil so that shaft is all I really need to replace hopefully they sell that if they don't sell it I'm gonna have to upgrade and that's about 110 bucks. I already did a video on how to replace the shafts. I think it was in a Toro. In fact, I'll link it below in this video. So at this point, I got to figure out exactly what transmission this is and order the parts, and then we'll be back. How's it going? I'm back. I got some parts, and I wasn't able to get the uh, three-quarter inch shaft. So. Um, what we're going to be using is a one inch upgraded shaft. Kit comes with everything. I just didn't see this bushing in there. So it's it's an upgrade, so you're going from three quarters of an inch to one inch. You want to get yourself a good pair of snap ring pliers. These are internal. It's a pretty heavy snap ring they use. Got in there, but it's not in the groove. There we go. So all this stuff's included with the kit. You're pretty much rebuilding the entire axle. So we're going to start out here with the axle. Upgraded to one inch. So that bushing will go in there first, I believe. And then the tapered end of the shaft should go through. And that comes out the seal nice with the taper. Then they have a washer. Goes on that inside bushing. They give you a replacement gear. So this will fit a spline there. And then they give you a fancy ring to try and snap on here. So we're going to work this on sort of like a piston ring. Just 
just want to be patient gradually work it on so if you break it you're waiting for parts almost there this thing goes around like three times I got it on, just snapped in there. It was tricky to get off too, but this one's a little bigger, so it might be a little thicker. Just putting a little oil on that. And there's a washer that goes in the back, but because it's gears here, I gotta kinda slip it in behind. So, there we go. There's a washer in there. Then we have a small gear, then another washer, a very thin washer goes on top of that gear, and then this gear goes on. There's no uh, timing or anything, these just kind of lock together. So I'm spinning the shaft, now that's aligned, we'll put on that little washer, I know that was on top, and then there's another small washer that goes there. And I think uh, all we need to really do at this point is fill the case and seal it up. So to seal this up, I'm going to be using the right stuff. The uh, tube broke. So I'm kind of spreading it by hand. You don't need much, just a light coat. So I let the RTV tack up a little bit. Add a little bit of oil up top. You want to be sure your pins are exposed. There's a washer here and a washer there. Put this on. Now just like the case on an engine, um, sometimes you gotta turn the shaft a little bit to get this to line up properly. There's two uh, pins. That one's in. There's one down on this corner. There we go. Now, before you put any of the bolts in, you, you should have that. There shouldn't be a hollow sound. It's a little hollow there, but the rest of it's solid and everything is seated. If it doesn't seat, you got to put the, the hub on and turn that shaft down there to get it all to, to seat. It will seat properly. You might need to turn that hub. And we're just going to start putting in these bolts and we're going to torque them to 130 inch pounds. sit a little bit maybe about 15 minutes and then I'll come back and, and torque them so there's a quarter inch plug here 
that's the oil fill and hopefully this impact will take it out because these are usually in pretty tight We got it. It's 20W50 synthetic. I got it filled all the way up, so I'm just going to take the hub, slip it on there. It's actually on there backwards, and I'm going to unlock the brake. Just spinning around a little bit. Even if it's filled all the way up to the top, it's all right, because a lot of these transmissions have a hose that comes out here that goes up to a tank. And if that tank ever goes low, then you know your level's low. So they give you a spacer. <clears throat> the other side of the tractor doesn't have a spacer, but the other side's very rusted. So I'll put this spacer on there. That'll help prevent some rust. Well, I got the transmission back in. And it was a lot harder to get in than it was to get out. I didn't film it, but it's in there. I got the tractor jacked up. I'm going to try and start it and just get the air bubbles out of it. We'll purge it a little bit. Okay guys, double wide six. Thanks for hanging out on this one. The only issue that I encountered was the uh, drive shaft was binding. Right when I started, I couldn't get the drive shaft uh, to, to move the wheel properly. But uh, I got that sorted out. Uh, I didn't have to adjust anything. It just, uh, by moving the lever, it, it eventually, I guess, fell into the proper place. So uh, the tractor runs real nice it has good power for a 15 horse and uh it cut very even the only thing i noticed about it is that both sides of the transmission are a little bit whiny and i've seen that with gravelys in the past i mean it's not something i particularly like it does whine a little bit on both sides but other than that it seems like it's a real nice machine so thanks for watching guys. Hopefully this repair will help you. I'll link you to the parts down below. And if you're not a subscriber, think about subscribing. Thanks.